SpaceX has revolutionized a whole generation's way of looking at space travel. From a new generation of spacecraft to powerful engines, SpaceX's hardware definitely has the edge over those of its competitors. However, Elon Musk's obsession with visiting and subsequently colonizing Mars has spread to the general public, and now the race is on. If SpaceX must stay on top, it must evolve and find new ways to push its machines to better performance. Nuclear engines might sound like a stretch, but if you're wondering just how it would work, stick with us until the end of the video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe after. First off, what exactly are nuclear rocket engines, and how do they work? Nuclear engines are more commonly known to have two types, nuclear thermal propulsion or rocket (NTP) for short, and nuclear electric propulsion. Pumping a liquid fuel, most likely hydrogen, into a reactor core is how NTP systems operate. Inside the nucleus, uranium atoms break apart and release heat by fission, and the fuel is then heated and converted to a gas, which is then expanded through a nozzle to create thrust. Compared to chemical propellants that store energy internally, the external nuclear heat source theoretically allows for a higher effective exhaust velocity and is expected to double or triple payload power. Nuclear electric propulsion systems are far more effective at using propellants than chemical rockets, but they produce less thrust. They use a reactor to produce energy, which positively charged gas propellants like xenon or krypton, and propels the spacecraft forward by moving the ions out via a thruster. Nuclear electric propulsion systems use low thrust to drive spacecraft for long periods, and can develop a Mars mission for a fraction of the cost of high thruster systems. NASA is examining preliminary reactor design ideas for a nuclear thermal propulsion system in alliance with the Department of Energy (DOE). The agencies plan to finance several initiatives to test various approaches. Future contracts will result in more comprehensive reactor design and the construction of preliminary research hardware. Jim Rauter, the Associate Administrator of NASA's Space Technology Mission Directorate (STMD), said, while NASA's immediate priority is returning humans to the moon with the Artemis program, we are also investing in tall pole technologies that could enable crewed missions to Mars. We look forward to seeing what innovations the industry offers in nuclear propulsion, as well as fission surface power via a forthcoming request for proposals for that technology. Nuclear rocket engines were first proposed in the 1940s. However, this time, proposals for interplanetary missions powered by nuclear fission and fusion are backed by new concepts that have a much better chance of succeeding. Importantly, nuclear engines are only intended for use in space and not in Earth's atmosphere. The craft is launched beyond low Earth orbit by using chemical rockets, and then, only then, is the nuclear propulsion device enabled. The challenge has been making these nuclear engines safe and lightweight. New fuels and reactor designs appear up to the task, as NASA is now working with industry partners for possible future nuclear-fueled crewed space missions. Nuclear propulsion would be advantageous if you want to go to Mars and back in under two years, says Jeff Sheehy, chief engineer in NASA's Space Technology Mission Directorate. He says that to enable that mission capability, a key technology that needs to be advanced is the fuel. The fuel must be able to withstand extremely high temperatures and unpredictable conditions found within a nuclear thermal engine. The two companies now claim that their fuels are clean, lightweight, and high-performing enough for a contractor. In reality, NASA has already received a comprehensive conceptual design from one of these companies. Nuclear thermal propulsion uses energy emitted from nuclear reaction to heat liquid hydrogen to about 2430 degrees Celsius, which is about eight times the temperature of nuclear power plant cores. Like we said before, when the propellant expands and jets out the nozzles at extremely tremendous speeds, it can create twice the thrust per mass of propellant as compared to that of chemical rockets. This would allow nuclear-powered ships to travel longer and faster. An additional benefit is that once the ship is at the destination, whether it's Saturn's moon, Titan, or Pluto, the nuclear reactor could shift from propulsion system to power source, allowing the craft to send back high-quality data for years. 
producing adequate thrust out of a nuclear rocket used to require some weapons-grade, highly enriched uranium. However, low-enriched uranium fuels used in commercial power plants would be safer to use. Still, they can become delicate and fall apart under the blistering temperatures and chemical attacks from the extremely reactive hydrogen. Ultra-safe Nuclear Corp Technologies USNC Tech, which is based in Seattle, however, uses a uranium fuel enriched to below 20%. While that is a higher grade than that of power reactors, it can't be diverted for nefarious purposes, so it greatly reduces proliferation risks, according to Director of Engineering Michael Aids. The company's fuel incorporates microscopic ceramic-coated uranium fuel particles distributed in a zirconium carbide matrix and the microcapsules keep radioactive fission byproducts inside while letting heat escape. BWX Technologies, based in Lynchburg, VA, is working under a NASA contract to work on designs using a similar ceramic composite fuel, and also examining an alternate fuel form encased in a metallic matrix. We've been working on our reactor designs since 2017, Joe Miller, general manager for the company's Advanced Technologies Group claims. Another route to small, safe, nuclear-powered rockets exists, according to Samuel Cohen, at Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory, Fusion Reactors. Reports state that mainline fusion uses deuterium and tritium fuels, but Cohen is leading efforts to make a reactor that relies on a fission between deuterium, atoms, and helium-3 in a high-temperature plasma, which produces very few neutrons. We don't like neutrons because they can change structural materials like steel to something else, like Swiss cheese, and can make it radioactive, Cohen says. The concept from Princeton Labs, called Direct Fusion Drive, also needs much less fuel than conventional fusion, and the device could also be one thousandth as large, Cohen says. Since fusion reactions release up to four times as much energy as fission reactions, fusion propulsion could theoretically outperform fission-based propulsion, according to NASA's Sheehy. However, the technology isn't quite there yet, and it faces several obstacles, including producing and containing plasma and effectively converting the energy released into the guided jet exhaust. It could be ready for Mars missions in the late 2030s, he says. USNC Tech has already made small hardware prototypes available, which are based on its new fuel. We're on track to meet NASA's goal to have a half-scale demonstration system ready for launch by 2027, says Eads. The next step will be to build a full-scale Mars flight system, one that could very well drive a 2035 Mars mission. Solid Core NTR development began in 1955 under the auspices of the Atomic Energy Commission AEC, as Project Rover and lasted until 1937. Los Alamos National Laboratory and the Nevada Test Sites Area 25 Nevada National Security Site worked on a suitable reactor. This project resulted in four basic designs, KIWI, Phobos, Peewee, and the Nuclear Furnace. Twenty different engines were put to the test, with a total runtime of over 17 hours. NASA was granted authority over all non-nuclear aspects of the rover program when it was established in 1958, while the Space Nuclear Propulsion Office SNPO, was established at the same time to facilitate collaboration with the AEC while keeping sensitive information separate. The aim of the NERVA program, which began in 1961, was to bring nuclear thermal rocket engines into space exploration. NERVA aimed to create a real engine that could be deployed on space missions, unlike the AEC work intended to research the reactor design itself. The NERVA baseline, designed for 334 kilonewtons of thrust, was based on the KIWI B4 series. SpaceX's Starship will be a beast of a ship. It's going to be powered by around 28 Raptor engines and provide some 16 million pounds of maximum thrust. It should also be able to lift at least 100 tons of payload and possibly as much as 150 tons to low Earth orbit. The ship's going to be used for long haul trips to Mars and back which could take up to 9 months each way. However, if Starship upgrades its engine cache to an NTR, the already groundbreaking thrust could increase by as much as twice. Travel time could go from 9 months to about half of that, and that would lessen the risk of losing astronauts on the way. This would also reduce their openness to space radiation, which can cause health problems including radiation sickness 
a heightened lifetime risk of cancer, central nervous system effects, and degenerative diseases. It would also decrease the overall risk of the mission. Would you buy tickets to Mars on a spaceship powered by nuclear engines? Let us know, and thank you for watching our videos. While you are still here, go ahead and click on one of these two videos on your screen. See you there!